If your snare is too ringy, lacking in tone, or it just sounds plain cheap and you don't know why, you're gonna learn a bunch of solutions today. I promise you that your snare, whatever snare it is, is going to sound a lot closer to your favorite record if you follow these steps today. You can do this, stick with me. And also at the end of the video, I'm gonna share with you a bonus point that really is the key to getting a professional sound out of your snare. We're gonna talk about all the nitty gritty stuff, how to get things tuned, muffled just right. But there's kind of a, a big thing that you don't wanna neglect that we're gonna cover at the end, so be sure to stick around for that. Your snare sounding cheap might not be your snare drum's fault, like not the actual shell's fault. There's so many other variables, and so we're gonna play around with this. I'll show you some tricks for getting better sounds out of your drums so that you don't have to go buy a new $500 snare in hopes that it will solve your problem, because it actually might not. So probably the most common and most annoying thing we deal with snare drums is ring, because that ring isn't always musical. Sometimes it can be, and you can tell me what you think. So where I've got this snare tuned, I don't mind this ring. I think it's a nice ring because you don't hear a distinct pitch. And that's the key. If your snare is ringing, but you're hearing a boom, like a distinct pitch, kind of like with a tom, that can be a problem and that's annoying and that's something you want to get rid of. But once you tune your snare high enough, that single pitch kind of fades away and it, gets, it becomes more complex where there's actually multiple pitches going on. But basically, if your drum has an annoying ring, tune it up higher to help get rid of that. Now, you may be like, Steven, I don't want to tune higher, and I'm with you there because I don't always like a high-tuned snare, and a lot of times I actually like a really low-tuned snare, so we'll talk about tricks for dealing with that in a minute. Sometimes, though, if, if your snare is ringing, the culprit might just be a worn-out head. The fact that the head has been on there for a long time and it's worn out and a lot of the coating is gone. It's interesting, when you put a fresh head on a drum, it tends to ring less, or the ring is just better. The drum just sounds better. And so it's possible you've forgotten how good your snare used to sound because you've beaten it so much and it just needs a new head. But here's a big one. Your drum could be ringing because you're not actually hitting it dead center. If you hit a snare right in the middle, there's gonna be a lot less ring than if you hit slightly off center. Hopefully that was pretty obvious. Like when you get to about an inch and a half from center, just suddenly you get boom, boom, like all this craziness. And of course that's accentuated as you go out near the edge. And so the issue might be you, not your snare. It could be your fault, not your snare's fault if you're not actually hitting consistently in the center of the drum. Now some drummers like to hit out near the edge or play rim shots near the edge to get a higher sound. And if that's you, you're just gonna have to deal with the, the ring resulting. You might wanna get one of those heads that has the holes in it that makes it more dead and less ringy so that you can play rim shots out near the edge and not have to deal with the ring. But if you have a Remo Ambassador, you're gonna get a lot of ring out there. Any normal head, there's gonna be ring near the edge no matter what you're playing out there. And so if you want just an attack, loud, powerful smack, hit the snare in the middle, or if you're playing a rim shot, still have the tip pretty much right there in the middle. That way you won't have And instead you'll have One other thing I wanna mention before we get into lower tunings. Sometimes the best solution, at least for me, if I wanna get rid of this little bit of ring, I have this thing that's like a jingly bracelet sort of thing that I'll actually just lay on the side of the drum. This tape has lost all of its stick, but it kind of stays in place here. No more ring. All that this does is it shortens the decay of the drum. It doesn't muffle it. Moon gel will muffle and O-ring will muffle, but something that's hard and metallic like this, all it does, it bounces up when you hit and it drops back down. So you still have the full tone of the drum, it just shortens it. That's a great go-to way to get rid of that ring. Sometimes I've noticed though, there can be so much ring that even this doesn't get rid of all of it. Sometimes that can happen when the drums tune lower. So let's go there now. If you're wanting to go for that lower tuning, and you're running into trouble, let's, let's fix that. All right, now we've got the drum tune super low. Listen to this nastiness. That's what I was talking about earlier, where when you're tuned lower, there's so much of that fundamental tone. The ring is not musical. When you're tuned high, the ring can be really nice, but when you're tuned low, you've got a distinct note. Boom, boom. So we'll just 
just go through a few things that I'll normally try to deaden out my snare when I'm tuned lower. And of course, the first go-to is the jingly thing. I love being able to snap this on here. And actually, that's pretty good. That's pretty much what we're going for. Now, if I go slightly off center, ugh. definitely important to stay right there in the middle. But what I'll also do, and let's try this without the jingle thing to see how much of a difference it makes. I'll also start detuning lugs all the way on the close side of the drum to cut off the circulation so the drum's no longer in tune with itself and that really helps keep it from ringing. That did nothing. On a 10 lug drum, a lot of times if you undo one lug, it doesn't actually do much. So we gotta undo the next one. Ah, there we go. That sounds better, it's more dead, but it's kind of weird. And so what I'll do at this point, if we're going for this super low, super dead, I'm gonna bring all the rest of them down even more. So they're not, you know, loose. They're still a little bit beyond finger tight, but definitely looser than they were. Uh, I don't know about that. So in that case, detuning the rest of them actually made it worse. So let's see what happens if we bring these up a little bit. We're bringing up everything except for the two closest, and we're gonna see if it gets us more in the, the dead region, because we wanna be dead right now. There we go. You just have to play around with it. Sometimes lower doesn't actually make it deader, doesn't actually make it beefier, sometimes actually going up does. In this case, I think what happened was because we had these two totally loose, totally loose, but what happened, or what needed to happen, was we needed more tone. We needed more tone to create the beefiness, while these are actually shortening the tone. So the tone is still here, but because of these two lugs being out, it keeps it short. So this is actually sounding kind of cool, and that's even without the jingly thing. That's actually cool, I like that sound. If I'm going for the dead sound, that's what I'm gonna do. So at that point, I can throw the jingle thing on for good measure and that'll just ensure that it's a very clean sound. Also, don't neglect to play around with your snare tension. When we tune low, you wanna go a little bit looser with the snare wires, otherwise if they're tight, it just sounds strange. It's not horrible, I just, I just think it's weird. There's our sweet spot. You just have to find that sweet spot. Usually you want the duration of the buzz of the snare wires to be equal to the duration of the tone of the drum. So when the drum's tuned higher, you can get by with tighter snares. When it's tuned lower, you generally want looser snares. But anytime there's ring, you can use some of the snare buzz sound to get rid of the ring by extending it. So if the drum is super ringy when it's tuned high, loosen the snares a little bit and that'll help bury the sound of the ring. So that's another tip that you can use at any tuning really. But what if you followed these exact steps so far, you've done exactly what I was doing, and you're still not happy with the sound, and it still just sounds cheap. Like the snare just sounds low quality, it doesn't sound good no matter what you do. Well, it's very possible that your bottom head is not actually tuned as high as it should be. That's something we forget about. With drums in general, we kind of forget about those bottom heads, or we get those in place and then we don't touch them for years because we just mess with the top heads. With the snare, you can do that. You can get the bottom head in tune and then never change it and detune the top head and get a low sound while still having the bottom head tuned high. That's kind of the great thing about a snare drum. But if you don't have that bottom head tuned where it needs to be tuned, you're never gonna be happy with your sound no matter what you do up here. So don't forget about that. I'll try to show you as best I can exactly how high the bottom head is tuned here. Boom, 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 that's the tone. So up top, we're super low. Honestly, you can't go too high with, with a bottom snare head. You can keep cranking it and cranking it, and the sound might even get better and better as you crank it. Uh, it's not gonna, the head's not gonna just rip in two if it's a good head. It's, it can go really tight. You can crank really tight. I'd say air on the tighter side, because if that bottom head is too loose, then you're not gonna get a quick response out of the snare wires. So even if you have the best snare wires on your snare drum, 
if that bottom head isn't tuned high enough, they're not gonna respond well and you're not gonna get a nice, thick, high quality snare sound. Now in dealing with sympathetic buzz, like if the snare is buzzing when you hit a floor tom, help if I turn on the snare wires to demonstrate. In that case, there's a lot of buzz. So a piece of advice I've often heard, but that I'm not a big fan of is loosening the lugs next to where the wires go across on the bottom. Uh, just because it helps them to not be so eager to respond. They're not going to buzz quite as easily that way. I found that doesn't always work, and I would rather keep that bottom head tight. I'd rather have the great snare response of a tight bottom head. Instead, I'll mess with the tuning of my toms in order to remedy that. So in this case, the reason why hitting the tom here results in a bunch of ringing over here is because this drum is tuned low, this drum is tuned low. So something's got to give somewhere. So what I would rather do is sacrifice the tom tuning to get the ideal snare without too much buzz, rather than changing the snare tuning. Though you can go either way with that. And so what I'll normally do is I'll mess with the toms and just detuning a lug or two until I'm happy with what they're doing. For more in-depth instruction and demonstration on that, I did a series on tuning a while back you can check out, where it's a long form video going into detail about dealing with all that. So you can watch me deal with the sympathetic resonance and figure that out. Uh, in real time in that video. I'll link it in the description. Now as a last resort, so let's say you've replaced your head, you've followed all these steps, you've tuned the bottom head up tight, so you've got everything on track, but you still don't like the sound, and, and you've played around with the snare wire tension. At that point, if it still isn't sounding good, replace the wires. Get pure sound snare wires. Those are my favorites. I'm a big fan of those. They just sound really good. You, there's a lot of options too. You can get eight strand, 10, 12, 16. There's a lot of different options. You can have like a whole bunch of snare wires under there or have it thinner so you get more of a dry sound. Uh, I think you can even get different materials too. So go check those out. Pure sound snare wires, those are really great. And so if you get those, that's gonna boost the sound of your drum a little bit. I actually, this is a, a nice snare drum here. And when I bought it, I immediately replaced the wires that came on it with my favorite pure sound wires. So that's just my go-to, and I know I'm always gonna be happy with their sound. Something else to note is that not every snare excels at every sound. Like, yes, I, I do believe that you can get roughly the sound you want out of any snare drum. You can get your snare to sound pretty close to that favorite sound you hear on your favorite record, but some snares do excel at that higher tuning because they have a nicer, more complex kind of ring that isn't so annoying. It's kind of like with cymbals, how some cymbals have like a pitch that you hear too much, but the ones that are more complex are more pleasing to listen to. So it's the same with a snare. And this one, I feel it does a pretty good ring as it gets higher. Not the best I've ever heard, but it is good. So I'm gonna tune this back up. I'll show you real quick how I might deal with that ring once it's tuned higher, because it becomes a totally different thing. When we're, when we're low, we might get rid of the ring by detuning lugs, but when we're higher, we're not gonna do that. That ring really doesn't bother me, but let's say we want to try to get rid of it. First thing I would try to do is tune up some of the side lugs. You can hear how if you start to detune a lug, then that pitch gets lower and more annoying. I think that's fine. I don't mind that amount of ring. And so you can gradually tune a couple of lugs a little bit higher to try to choke out some of that so it's a little bit less. But really I would reach for my go-to, this thing right here. Make sure you're hitting in the middle of the drum. That's definitely important. One more thing though. Your snare might not sound good simply because of the way it's mic'd or the room that it's in. So if you're trying to record, if you're, if you're doing like the home studio setup and you got the mics and everything, your drum is always gonna sound more ringy through the close mic than it is through the overheads. And this does apply to a live situation too. If you're playing on a big stage and your drums are mic'd and maybe you're wearing in-ears and in your ears, your snare is ringing a bunch. A lot of times that's because you're hearing a lot of what this close mic picks up. And the close mic is picking up all sorts of ring and all this stuff that sometimes isn't super desirable coming from the snare. But the overheads are picking up what you're actually gonna hear, what your audience is actually gonna hear, which is less ring. So if you are recording, if you are in a live situation, my advice would be don't use too much of that close mic, or if you are, you've got to EQ it carefully. Instead, use more of the overheads because they're picking up the crack of the snare without all the excess ring. 
any snare sound in your favorite record, it's gonna have a lot of EQ going on, it's gonna have some compression, there's gonna be all sorts of stuff they've done to it. So it's not always a fair comparison to compare your snare sound with what you hear on a recording because the one on the recording was recorded with the best mics in the best room and they've done the, this precise EQ to make it sound exactly the way they want it. And so it's literally perfection, at least for that song, it's perfection. And so it's gonna be hard to compare yours to that when you don't have those same mics and you don't know exactly what they did EQ wise. You just have to play around with it yourself until you're happy with it. But that's just something to keep in mind. Some rooms that you play in, the snare will ring more than others, and it's hard to say why. I've definitely experienced that playing in big rooms, small rooms, being mic'd up, not mic'd up. And sometimes it does come down to this mic is just cranked up too much. Other times it's just the room, and you literally have to play around with your snare tuning because of that room. You just have to be flexible. Okay, bonus point that I mentioned earlier, this is really a key to sounding professional, having a good professional snare sound, whatever you're playing, whatever song you're playing. If you're still having trouble with your snare sound, even after everything we've worked through so far, if you've messed around with your tuning, you've done all the stuff, you followed all the steps, and it's still not sounding good when you're playing or when you're listening back to recordings of yourself playing, here's kind of one final way to troubleshoot, and it very well could be the issue. If you aren't hitting your snare properly and consistently in grooves, like when you're playing backbeats, then it's going to sound cheap and amateur no matter what. Let me show you what I mean. That was a total mess, right? My time was probably pretty good, okay, at least I wasn't playing to a click but I was trying to keep time pretty steady while messing up the dynamics horribly and not hitting the snare in the middle and not hitting it evenly. You've gotta be intentional about practicing hitting the snare evenly on two and four. Whether you're playing rim shots or hitting dead center, be even and consistent because the listener needs to feel that evenness, that consistency. It's the consistency of dynamics, that repetitive pulse in your playing, that's what creates good feel. It's not so much good time. I mean, good time is important. It's good to play with good time, but when you listen to old records, like the old Zeppelin stuff, they weren't recording to a click, but it felt great because Bonham had great dynamics, great consistency, and he was slamming those rim shots every time. So you could lay back into it, always knowing what to expect. It's kind of that subconscious, ah, yeah. Oh, yeah, you know what to expect. It's like a four on the floor. It makes you want to dance, not because the timing of it is perfect, but because it's consistent. It's like a heartbeat. So to fix that, sit there at your kit and practice playing rim shots on two and four steadily or dead center two and four steadily. Practice both of those things, just be dynamically consistent. There just has to be that reliable backbeat that's always coming, whatever volume it's gonna be. So decide maybe what your volume ceiling might be. If it's a rim shot, then there's your volume ceiling, but maybe it's quieter, it's softer. Make sure you're always hitting right there every time. That way you can put your listener at ease, have the same consistent snare sound each time. I guarantee if you go through all the steps I gave you today, get your snare drum sounding better, and then make sure you're hitting it right and consistently you're gonna sound so much more pro than you thought you could have sounded. So believe me, you can do this when you take action and follow these steps. Hey, if you enjoyed this video, and most importantly, if it helped you out and provided you with some value, be sure to subscribe if you're new. Also grab my free e-guide in the description below, five steps to learning any song in under 60 minutes. The powerful method that teaches you all the listening skills to actually hear a song and basically cheat at learning a song fast without having to physically practice it. It all comes down to listening really well. And so this helps train your ear, helps you figure out how to quickly write a chart and learn a song without having to use drum tabs or sheet music you find online. No tutorials needed. You learn it by ear yourself, which is a really cool accomplishment. So go check that out if you want to give that a shot. Thanks everyone for watching. You can do this. You can accomplish whatever you want to accomplish on the drums when you put your mind to it and you do the practicing and you take action. Go download that song learning e-guide and you're gonna be well on your way to really reaping some benefits and really growing in your playing. You can do this, stay non-glamorous. I'll see you on the next video.